an education group? I am not this tall. Uh, wow. We're really excited about this. We had a really good conversation. Um, and uh, in this group, I don't think one of our other groups is back, but that's OK. Uh, we talked about kind of what is working and what isn't working with annotation and education. We all know how powerful um, using annotation is in the classroom. One of the biggest concerns that's there is figuring out FERPA and privacy regulations. So how do we, like, how do we, uh, how do we know that the annotation service that we're using is compliant with the educational institutions, uh, you know, privacy and FERPA rules? Um, and so there are some questions that from a hypothesis. So by the way, I failed to introduce myself, but I am, a, I am, my name is Arthi and I'm a product manager at Hypothesis. So <laughs> there are some questions obviously that Hypothesis has to answer in, in terms of figuring out how does Hypothesis um, make uh, annotation in the classroom FERPA compliant. Um, some, we talked about a lot of use cases of things we want to see in, in the annotation experience in the classroom. Um, basically, a lot of those, a lot of those uh, use cases talked about how do we engage the students more deeply in the reading experience so it's not just a linear annotation experience where they just do it just to get the homework assignment done, but they're really engaging in a community-centric um, way with the text and the other students in the classroom. Um, and then we, the last thing that we kind of went over is what are things that we want to see for next year? Um, one of them, which I think most of us, maybe all of us in this room can agree with, is students annotating a Trump ad administration legislation and getting national press for the project and maybe even getting him to, <laughs> to leave his post. Um, more documentation on building your own instance for Hypothesis or for any other annotation tool. Um, ex extending out the Hypothesis search capabilities and actually building out a dashboard so you can see you know, a, a sort of heat map of where the annotations are being made, how those connections are being made across the students, who are the high, like high level annotators, things like that. So it's a really great discussion. If you want to continue the discussion, please contact Jeremy Dean, who's um, our, our program director at Hypothesis um, in the education space. Thank you so much. Actually, um, so th there weren't too many people in the group that weren't already intimately familiar with the product or working on the product itself. So there were only a few extra use cases that were, you know, really problematic and kind of, um, you know, Mary Ann's phrase, kind of stupid in their workflow right now. So um, first of all, um, actually this is something that's uh, come up very recently with the uh, EPUBJS stuff is multiple iframe support. Um, as uh, Sebastian said, people send me links and there are iframes with the PDF inside and that's really problematic. So. Um, that's a really interesting use case, and when it comes to EPUB, um, they're basically uh, a website with multiple iframes in it as pages. So um, that one, you know, just a little benefit here. Like once we get this EPUB stuff done, that is going to include this multiple iframe support. So everyone, once we, you know, get EPUB JS done, will have multiple iframe support out of the box. So. That's just an awesome thing, that the evident point. And what, what was that timeline again? Um, and so another use case that came up was potentially maybe the ability to reply to anchored annotations with annotations themselves so that you can basically um, contain a conversation or collect a list of annotations in multiple areas of a document within one kind of thread instead of having annotation, you know, just you know, no uh, structure to it. Uh, the next kind of, this is probably popular with this crowd, is maybe we should support the, uh, you know, pulling up annotations by DOI, you know. <laughs> so that one came up and we uh, looked a lot into that. Um, URLs, as we all know, are very susceptible to things like session data or little bits of URL differentiation that breaks annotations. So DOI is really important for large set of use cases. The next thing we talked about was maybe the ability to do multi-selection because there are people curating uh, papers and they have to do the same step multiple times throughout the page and that is error prone and that could be 
better served with being able to select multiple things and talking about it in one area. Um, an interesting thing that we came up with that was maybe doing the, something with replying to annotations with annotations could alleviate this problem in the sense that you can annotate all these pieces and collect them into one thread in a structured manner. The next thing was... Do you want to pick the best of the next things? And well, there's only one more. All right. So, I mean, so again, these aren't like, um, for a lot of you, these aren't surprises, nor are these things that we're going to immediately say, oh, we're going to, you know, jump on immediately. It's not like it's broken uh, without these things at the moment. So um, the next thing is annotation docu to document relationship uh, management could be improved. Um, moving annotations, copying annotations, potentially one annotation to multiple references, and then migrating annotations. So we have this one URL, all of our annotations on it, we moved it, or it's things like that. So anyway, it was a very uh, you know useful discussion for me to hear a lot of really good use cases from uh, people I have not yet met, so that was awesome. So thank you. Hi, I'm Benjamin Young with John Wiley and Sons. We did the Apache Annotator group, which kind of forked like any good open source project. And uh, we had two groups, and these two guys are going to cover what's in the groups. Hello, everybody. Uh, learning about the data model for some of this um, new stuff that was coming out of the Apache project, a uh, couple pet projects that I've been dreaming about one, which is just the simple ability to export your bookmarks to an URL, which, because it's, it, it retains the hierarchical structure because that's available, seems like a simple hack, and that was confirmed by this group. And so we talked about what it might look like to get together and actually do that, so I will share with everyone, we're going to try to build something which does that. So if you're interested, Benjamin uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, and, and the second is, is this notion of silos and the way in which the annotation that happens within silos is very difficult to get out. And we, I've been playing around with this idea of sort of hijacking the like button in Facebook. So through a browser extension, that vote also goes to uh, what ultimately would be a curated newspaper or um, let's just call it a newspaper. And that also seemed to meet with some interest and so we were talking about those two as very simple hacks that we would like to do and may may take a whack at so again i think benjamin would be the best point of contact since i'm so new but that was that was the part of the discussion that i was leading and interested in hi i'm josh again we talked about um there's Everyone knows about those standards, right? Those new standards we all celebrated. They came out on March, I think. We don't want those to die, right? Join the community group, the web annotations community group. If you Google web annotations GitHub, you'll see the rep our repositories. Please participate, comment on our issues, open new issues on GitHub, and there's a mailing list there. Make our mailing list active again. Don't let web annotations die. OK, so we had a, a wide-ranging discussion over at the uh, nominally Wikipedia table. Um, but I, I did manage to, to sort of uh, boil down three things I could, I could say, I could report back. Um, so three uh, lacks in the standard annotation model that, that seem to, um, uh, uh, well, merit discussion. So one is, is, uh, is versioning, the idea that the, even in the W3 spec, uh, it's a URL, but the, U, the contents of that URL aren't constant. And neither is if you have a DOI, it references an article, but that article could get retracted or corrected at some future point. So even a DOI isn't actually a, a, a sort of reference to uh, the latest version of, of something. So that we really sort of, um, uh, one, the ability to extend the, the, the base uh, reference for an annotation um, with something, maybe from, from li library science, there's something called Ferber or, um, or Wemmy, the, the idea that there's works, expression, manifestation, and instance. Um, 
hope I'm, I'm, I'm reporting that right. So the idea that there's, there's more data beyond that, the, the, simple refer, uh, the simple URL that could be used to, to disambiguate some of these things. Um, uh, and so the second report back was, uh, for example, for typos. Um, we, there could be a standard annotation format for simple edits to a source. Um, so we can record corrections as annotations and people could apply them easily. And so if it was a journal article which appeared on paper and the paper journal didn't want to publish my one character fix to that article, it could get published as an annotation to that. Or on Wikipedia where I am happy to update the actual article, but maybe it's just easier for you to, to, to type that thing and submit it to us and an editor for Wikipedia will one click apply that later. Um, so in general for, for all people who, you know, uh, we, could, we could cooperate on um, on some basic uh, format for these edits um, so that we could share them. Um, and then that goes down to the next thing, which is a sort of idea of bi-directional links or a search without requiring centralization. So um, once a base document is corrected, chasing down all the annotations based on that and applying or ignoring the correction. For example, if there's a data set um, for a paper which was missing some, some points, when that data set is corrected, all the things which refer to that get chased down. Maybe this was based on, um, you know, the, the peak is still present uh, even after these data points are added, and so that you can sort of say, okay, yes, I've, I've corrected that, that, that still is valid, but this other c conclusion I drew was not valid. Um, an AP article, a, a wire article, um, could appear in many slightly different forms in a dozen newspapers. Each, if each of those published an annotation indicating that was a version of this AP article, when that AP article was then later retracted or corrected, um, it should be possible for a search engine or some tool to be able to chase down all those annotations and, and, and um, either notify or apply those corrections to uh, all the different places that appears. Um, so that was it, versioning, um, some standard for typos or simple edits, and bi-directional links slash search without centralization. Thanks. Cool. All right. Hi, I'm uh, T.S. Waterman. Uh, we were talking about uh, search for annotations and search over annotations and what that means. Uh, this very small group with uh, Graham Knott and uh, Lauren Bianchini in the back corner there. Um, so a lot of it was brainstorming and, and scenario building because this is something that doesn't exist yet. Um, but uh, some of the dimensions include, uh, just like uh, Scott was just talking about, if you have an article that's distributed over the web, um, how do you aggregate those things so you can search annotations for it as a single unit. So if you had a DOI, could you collate all of the annotations for that in order to search over them and, and sort through them? Uh, or even if there wasn't some unique ID, is there some way to uh, collate all those things and put them together? Um, we had some ideas like the number of annotations on a thing is a measure of its quality or at least its popularity or presence in uh, the culture doing the annotation. Um, other things that are quality signals are who's commenting. So for instance, if you're trying to follow a uh, reputed scholar or a movie reviewer or a whoever uh, who you've got some interest in, the things they're annotating are all of a sudden objects of interest for you. So that may be a filter that you want to search on in order to find interesting things under a topic that are annotated by some member of a select group that um, that indicates their quality. Um, and we quickly got off onto what actually is an annotation for the purpose of search. So um, things like book reviews, movie reviews, uh, summaries, abstracts of scholarly works, um, but also reviews of products um, came up. And so these things are all annotations to not necessarily a web thing with a URI, but a thing with a unique identity and a location. Um, and that gives you the opportunity to aggregate all those and search over them, including things out in the real world that don't have URIs, but may through the Internet of Things. So a particular Uber driver, a particular hotel, Amazon products, restaurants, Yelp, um, all of these things, and then eventually ending up as people so you have sites like Rate My Professor. Um, can you aggregate that stuff and search over who's leaving comments or search on the targets? Uh, and that extends into other ridiculous things like doctors, physicians, service people, dating sites, uh, all of which can be aggregated and searched as annotations onto real objects. Thanks. Quick. 
All right. Um, we were focused on adoption strategies. So um, uh, basically looking at um, the researcher workflow around um, scholarly publication um, and potentially uh, annotation as something that's embedded in those publications um, as, a, as a narrow focus. Um, and it was a very wide-ranging discussion, so um, I'll just mention a few things that, that kind of came out of it. Um, one is um, some differences of opinion. In some, uh, there was some discussion about having annotations be um, on the paper already, potentially by authors or the community, as a way to kind of socialize the fact that the um, that there was annotation there already to make it safe um, for other people to kind of come in after um, an annotate post publication. But then there was other people, a difference of opinion, including if there's a single annotation on my paper at publication, then I failed um, because they had, you know, that would be a comment that should have been in incorporated actually into the body. So clearly we have some work to do um, in terms of identifying the value proposition for annotations pre publication. Post uh, publication annotation. Um, one insightful comment is that we don't need to get people to annotate. We need to facilitate what people already want to do. Um, and um, th I think that was th th something um, that we should pay attention to. Um, we need, need to really focus on ways to make it relevant to the author um, in terms of um, metrics, things that authors care about, um, getting published, drawing awareness, increasing their H index, their citability, um, getting through tenure committees and, and so forth. Um, so really focusing on the, the, um, the, the, the needs of authors and in, in that's kind of um, along the lines of facilitating what they need, what they, what they want to do. Um, need to figure out how annotation is going to drive more views of scholarly work. Um, because um, awareness um, is really um, the key currency of, uh, of what authors care about. Um, a great uh, idea was to look at what uh, software carpentry community has done um, and to look at uh, ways of um, perhaps replicating that in uh, and around um, annotation carpentry or kind of the analog um, for that. Uh, integrate with uh, citation managers a program called Org Mode, which I had never heard of before. Um, but Org Mode, O R G dash M O D. It's like a it's like a LaTeX uh, editor, but also a way f that people kind of um, gather notes and all sorts of things. I need to learn a lot more about it. And uh, let's say build it into all sorts of places, particularly open access ones. And Caltech said they're in and they're going to make it happen. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hi. So we talked about uh, annotation in the context of notebooks. And what we mostly focused on was the context of people um, learning to use various kinds of code and the ability for them to immediately uh, give feedback back to the developers of whatever library that is. And so one of the sort of use cases that came up um, is uh, one of the things that makes a notebook really nice is to be able to have many different kinds of views on the underlying documentation and doc strings and whatnot. Um, and having the ability to annotate that but have the target of said annotation be not where you are annotating it, but be a completely separate website, whether that be on GitHub, whether that be on Read the Docs, whether that be wherever it happens to be, wherever it matches based off of the semantics of whatever the view is. Um, probably going to require a bunch of finagling, but uh, it's an interesting use case, and so, and we went pretty deep into that sort of topic.